Hey guys, good morning from our lovely hotel room in Shrimkent Bay Bay. Behind us, you can see the sun is coming out. It's getting a little lighter. Just want to say a special thank you to our hotel in Shrimkent. You know what though? Check out the TV. Samsung flat screen. That's amazing. All right, we're gonna head out. I'm gonna give the key back to reception here. Okay, so we just finished a little breakfast. And to be fair, like, don't think that the hotels, all the hotels here are like this. They're not all like this, so don't make fun. It's because we have a cheap hotel. We took a pretty cheap bus tour. It was like $50 US each. So this hotel is probably like around $10 US. So that's already a lot of the money gone, right? So because we booked a cheap tour, you get a cheap hotel. That's the way it goes. And if we would book a hotel for like $150 a night, of course we would get something nicer. Even in Europe or Canada, you have some really nasty hotels. And this was pretty clean, to be honest. It's just, you know, the construction of it and all that stuff is old and outdated. So we're headed to the bus or else they might leave without us. Bye bye hotel. There's a little barber shop here. So here's our first glimpse of Shimkent city and looks pretty cool so far nice street here Some nice people walking around Dobre utra. all right look at the beautiful people of Shumkent waiting for a city bus they have a little telephone booth like it's uh, england look at the people they're just looking up here they're like what is this guy filming <laughs> guys we are here we just got to the destination it's another holy place it is the mausoleum of domalak anna the landscape here is gorgeous they have like rolling hills and well it's it's mostly it's like flat but a bit hilly and they have a beautiful mountain in the distance or mountains in the distance it's kind of like a foggy-ish day but you see in the distance mountains. This is the mausoleum of Domalak Anna. This famous woman here, Domalak Anna, who was buried here, and this mausoleum is because of her. She was the third wife of Baidebek uh, Karashali, who basically was managing the tribes of the Seven Rivers. And she was highly respected. People loved her for her wisdom, her intellect, and just the way that she was such a great mother. So she actually made a prediction for her husband one time. The, in the village, they were attacked and she made a prediction that all the horses would come back because some some people came another tribe came and stole thousands of horses so she made a prediction that the horses would come back to the village and don't go fight and he went to fight anyway he lost most of his men he didn't listen to his third wife and most of his men and sons died and when he came back the horses were there so her prediction was right so it's an interesting story in the uh, culture of Kazakhstan and the history of Kazakhstan so it's very cool to be a part and see with your own eyes this mausoleum of this respected woman here uh, she's basically the mother of South Kazakhstan Tashkent, a little bit of Uzbekistan, this whole region. It's amazing how they preserve their history and they highly respect the people in history. They make these nice big mausoleums to remember these people. And that's why the Kazakh history is so rich because they keep the history going and they keep the respect going. So it's very nice. Another interesting fact about this mausoleum and this sacred place is that a lot of women get pregnant here. So if they ask for it, they have gotten it. That is the baby's bed uh -huh. uh, called... Uh, 
listen. And if you want to have baby, you just put their some money coins. Oh, okay. So this is where it is. So there's the baby's bed here. And if you put some money, put some coins and ask for a baby, then you'll get it. Is it in here? Okay, well, there's, I think there's some, some people asking for a baby. So in this room here, it's actually just a place for praying. I don't know. So this is a praying place. This is where we would sit. People put the money right there. And this is where we would do this. This is the way of praying in Islam, Muslim way, or maybe the Catholic way, I'm not sure. But this, I see it all the time at the tables in Kazakhstan. When we have dinners or lunches or meals, after the meal, they say a nice, some wishes, after the wishes are done, like this. So there seems to be all kinds of these little things here. These homes, people inside here praying, asking for things. Oh, that's the baby's one. Okay, maybe we'll check that out. So there's another one here. So in here, there's a little baby um, thing. Besik, besik. Besik, where the baby sleeps. And this is probably where you would wish for a baby. done looking at the mausoleum now there's just nice little paths to walk on little stores like this with stuff that they're selling little jewelries and stuff we can go have a peek little jewelries and stuff so it's a very strong part of the tradition in kazakhstan to um, stay protected from bad eyes like you see everything has these eyes on it like this you have here more you have here some more here some more little bracelets as well all to protect yourself from bad people guys camels with jewels these are nice and the famous bed thing okay guys so this is Raihan. remember we had a, a meal with her last time we were eating in um Turkestan. But look, the Kazakh people are so mixed, guys. Look at her eyes. Look at her eyes. The color of her eyes are like grayish color. Beautiful color. And uh, krasiva. Mm -hmm. And um, the Kazakh people are so mixed from olden times. There's Kazakh people with like these color eyes, blue eyes, green eyes, light eyes. It's such a melting pot of culture. Central Asia, the center of the world, guys. All right, so Sultana just got some stuff at the store. What did you get here? I got a uh, tasik for my friend, Aynur, who um, read Quran namaz, so it's called tasik. Aynur is Muslim, she reads the Quran, so this is like a, a good gift for her. Well wow, guys, we're in the bus right now, but just driving and looking outside here, the grass is so green, the dirt is such a nice color. I think this is like beautiful land for farming and you have mountains in the distance like I would have a house right here no problem it's gorgeous a little slice of paradise but nobody's really paying attention to that you know cave people used to be hiding from the Dungars which uh, are a tribe of people in these lands when the Dungars used to attack 
This was their hiding place so that they can be saved, save their families. I can't imagine how that would have been, how terrible that feels to be running away from an invasion. So we are arriving at the caves now. Behind me, these beautiful mountains in between these valleys, rock valleys. This is like a hike, guys. Going up these steps. Yeah, these little rascals running around. These are the caves, guys. We're about to walk down these stairs. Birds flying out of this thing. Everyone's down there. Oh, there's even trees that grow in here. Down here, this is where the people of this area, right? They used to hide from the Jungars when the Jungars were attacking. It's called the White Mosque because they used to hide and pray here. And I'm sure that this place has saved many people's lives because the Jungars probably didn't know about it at that time. So this was like their hiding place. And if you know the lands, you know the hiding spots, right? This cave is massive. Big hole on top. Water trickling down. So this man here that I just showed you, this man is a 90 year old man and he's the one who takes care of these caves. He's doing some praying right now. In the cave here, there are some hills. Where you see some hills in this cave, people are buried there. And he's taking care of the graves. He's taking care of this place. We're gonna pray with him. So we just did a little praying there. And uh, Kadle Gash is being mommy, she's making sure we're safe with the white hats. Thank you, Kadle Gash, Rahmet, Ulken Rahmet. Thank you very much. Ulken Rahmet means thank you in, uh, well, thank you very much in Kazakh language. There's a Chinese legend that there was a dragon from China who used to come all the way to Kazakhstan. It's not far, it's on the border anyways, but still, China's a big country, Kazakhstan's a big country. So one of their dragons used to come here and hide in the winter time. So that's why apparently the Chinese people love this place. They come here a lot when things are normal. A lot of Chinese like to come here and see it because it's part of their legend too. Sotana just fell. She's all dirty. See what happens when she's not with me? She's like a baby. She needs to be taken care of. Look at this. Dirty, dirty jacket. This is kind of interesting. I don't know what's the story behind this, but there's a bunch of towels. Well, actually not towels, they're like head wraps actually. So Tana's being a good citizen, taking photos for people. Okay, let's get out of here because I think we're the last people in this cave. And we're always the last people to get to the bus, or one of the last people. These big hills behind us, I think this is where people are buried. That would make sense. These little rocks here, rock formations, they're everywhere. I don't even really understand the meaning behind these rock formations. They have them all over Canada, and they have them here. They're probably a worldwide uh, thing, so. If anybody really knows the true story behind these rock formations, please in the comments let me know because I just don't know. Gash told us to make this pyramid of rocks and then make a wish. So I think Kadle Gash knows something more than I do about this tradition. Heading back to the bus. That was a good experience. Okay, we're back at the bus. 23 is our number. 
We're going to lunch now. Julie, Julia, Julie, Julia, Julie, oh, oh. Okay guys, we just came out of the bus. We're taking a break, going to eat. Here we go. Oh, look at this. Food, food, food. You can even sit the traditional way. Nice little cafe here. Cafe Azar. Okay, Kadligash doesn't like this place, so we're gonna go check another one. Because we have all these different cafes to choose from all a whole building full of cafes so we don't want to limit our options too much we also lost Guljanat, so we're looking for her this place is much bigger and we found Guljanat. there she is <laughs> and then some people over here oh look at this fruits grapes Okay, so it's kind of like a buffet place. We're gonna grab some stuff here ourselves, and then we can also order some stuff like hot meal stuff. Man, this place is so alive. So many people, it's just like, everybody's grabbing stuff, and you have to pay for the stuff, like the buffet stuff, right, right away. But if you want to order something, like, he'll bring it in and you pay after. Slav just came. Sultana is digging in. Yummy. Okay, guys, finished eating. Going back on the bus, that was pretty delicious. That place was like a bazaar. So many people in that place. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, global citizens, we're out of the bus again. We are at the mausoleum of Aisha Bibi. We're close to the city of Taraz. The women have to wear the headscarf again because it's a sacred holy place. Look behind me here, beautiful architecture, of course. And Kadligash is ready to go. Kadligash. What's up? Tell us what you think about it. Hello. Do you like this stuff? Yes, <laughs> yes. So yeah, so now we're going in to the place. here is the mausoleum of Aisha Bibi and the legend behind this why they made this mausoleum after her and buried her here is because she was a 16 year old girl she fell in love with the king of Taraz and her father disapproved of this love so she snuck away to go and meet him with her nurse but when she left they stopped at a river to, just to bathe like just to wash their face and then when she was doing that she had taken off her headscarf put it on the ground to go and wash her face when she came back to take her headscarf there was a snake in the scarf and the snake bit her and it was a fatal bite so she died so this here represents love family happiness so the people come here to say some good wishes for a you know health a, a nice family and for love and the mausoleum next to the big one this is Aisha Bibi and the one over here the small one is for her nurse and as we go to the back here the front of it is a, a remodel because a lot of it probably was old so the back here is the original tile so you can see here that the tiles are a lot older you know you could feel it you could see it it's more ruined it's uneven the way that it is and then the ones over in the front are nice and new looking even here see new and then actually here's a good contrast right here old new you can see the difference 
Even these are even darker as well. So we just made some wishes in this mausoleum right here. A little Muslim prayer. I'm not Muslim, but I do the things when I'm in certain countries. If I'm in someone's culture, I respect their culture and I do as they do. Generally, the people of Kazakhstan, especially in the South, are very traditional, very spiritual. And a lot of wishes, a lot of mausoleums, a lot of respect, a lot of going and remembering the dead and stuff like this. They put a lot of time and energy into remembering the ones who passed away, which is pretty nice. Okay, guys, so I just want to explain something quickly. Um, the tour guide here is Arina, right? Right, Arina, yeah. So she has an amazing story. She was telling uh, Sultana before and she translated it to me. So I just wanted to get this story because it's so amazing. It touched my heart, so I know it'll touch yours. Whenever people do things that they love, that's the nicest thing to hear and to see. So I'm gonna let her explain here what it is, how she became a tour guide in the first place. Когда я была маленькой, я впервые уже увидела озеро Хайнде. Это было приблизительно в 2000 х годах. И когда я его увидела, у меня просто зародилась маленькая мысль, как было здорово привозить сюда людей. И вот уже шесть лет я занимаюсь своим любимым делом. И вам желаю того. Желайте, мечтайте, и непременно ваши мечты сбудутся. Спасибо. That's the story. I think it's very touching. Rahmet so much for everything. She's been an amazing tour guide. And if you come to Kazakhstan, especially Amati. Exactly. So anywhere in Kazakhstan, even Turkey and uh, I think uh, United Arab Emirates, if I'm not mistaken, she does tours in all kinds of places. If you're Russian speaking, you're good to go. And for English, I can help you out as well. But I'm going to give the links in her description, Instagram and her information. So you guys can come check her out. All right. Thanks. Peace. This guy here, he's selling these beautiful Kazakh traditional hats that I love. It's like my favorite hats. And of course, I find the females in here. Goja Nats in here buying stuff. <laughs> Karla Gash is buying stuff in here. And this one over here. There are some beautiful things in here, though. Okay, guys, we're out of here. Fresh court. We're done the tour. The tour is over. Finito. And we're on the bus now. We're going to be heading back to Almaty. It was an amazing trip. I'm very grateful for the experience. And if you're in Kazakhstan, come do a bus tour like this. Peace out, my global citizens. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking with me. And I hope you learned something new today. I'm happy to show Kazakhstan for what it is and from my experience. And hopefully if you had an if you had like an opinion of Kazakhstan before, a more closed-minded one maybe, then now it's more open because of my episodes. But yeah guys, thanks for watching. Peace.